All right. Now listen, I want you to understand when I preach this message, I'm trying to get you prepared. <laughs> I'm not fussing at you. Okay? But as the pastor of this church, you will not stand before the judgment seat of Christ, or God forbid that you stand before the white throne judgment. You'll not point your little bony finger at me and say, well, he never told me that. Because I'm going to, you know what? The Bible is to give you not only the good news, but it's to tell you if you're into the bad news, to get you out of it and get you in the right place that you should be with the Lord. And of course, this morning, this is a Christmas message. It really is. And uh, if you want to know what the title of the message is, and it was kind of uh, funny, the last song, or one of the last songs we sung, is Make Room for Him in Your Heart. And the title of this message is, There Was No Room. What I want to talk about just a little bit, I was studying, and as I was studying this, something hit me so profoundly that I just began to weep before God. You know, Mary was a teenage girl. And she was going along, and I know that she must have been serving God under the auspice of her parents. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, there was a supernatural being that appeared before her. And of course, he wanted to calm down her nerves. <laughs> I, I'll tell you what, one of those angels appear in my bedroom there's going to be at least three or four imprints on the wallpaper of me trying to get out of there. Because <laughs> that's one of the things they say right out the bat is, fear not. And when he identified himself, he said this. Wow. He said, Mary, my name is Gabriel. And I stand in the presence of God. Did you hear what I said? This is a being that stands in the very presence of a thrice holy God. Something we can't even begin to comprehend, people. And so I've come bearing some good news to you. He said, you are blessed among women. He said, the Holy Spirit's going to come over you. And I had forgotten that Jesus Christ was called a holy thing. <laughs> This holy thing that is inside of you. He will be called the day spring. And if you don't know what that word day spring means. When you get up tomorrow morning. If you get up early enough. You're going to see that sun come up on the east. And you're going to see it break. And push the darkness away. And when Jesus Christ was born. Hell shook as darkness was pushed away. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Praise God. You know, the sad thing about it is those that are lost don't realize the power of darkness that possesses their lives. They've become so accustomed to the darkness. That's why many times they don't like to be around Christians. I'm talking about a real Christian that's on fire for God. One is baptized in the Holy Spirit. Because when you walk into a room where a sinner is, the light comes on. And they don't want to have their works of darkness discovered. Because you are a child of God, you are a child of this light that came into this world. But one of the things that struck my attention, and I'm going to get into the message was when he told Mary this. You see, God will never override your will. Satan will. But God will never override your will. He gives an invitation for eternal life. But he will not force you into heaven. And you know what? There are no long lines trying to get into heaven. You ever notice that? You want to get in the short line, get in the one going to heaven. The long line is the one going to hell. This is what Mary said. She gave God permission. So be it according to the Lord's will. 
She gave God permission because he would not override her will. And how blessed Mary was. But you know, along with that blessing came great pain and heartache. When she had to witness this child and later on this man that she knew that changed the water into wine to be hung upon a cross naked giving his life that broke her heart. But she saw him resurrected from the dead and how her heart must have rejoiced and how blessed she knew she really was. God used me to bring this God-man into this world. And she will be called blessed for eternity because of this part that she played. And I want you to turn with me, if you will, to the book of Luke in chapter 2. And I want you to go to verse 8, if you will. And I appreciate Brother Les. He's doing double duty up there. Bless his heart. And, uh, and let, me, let, me, let me just for the sake of our praise and worship team, they're all legitimately gone. Some are out of town. Uh, Brother Tom and, and uh, Sister Selena and uh, Brother Clayton, they are over at their mothers. And the reason they're there this morning, their sister is going to be moving to Canada. And they're leaving at 1 o'clock to go to St. Louis. So I want you to know there's nothing derelict or any of because I talked to Brother Tom on the phone when he told me he wasn't going to be here. And I told Brother Tom, I said, well, Brother Tom, serving God is voluntary. There's nothing mandatory about it. God will make you do nothing. And if you don't fall in love with God, you won't do the things that God wants you to do. You'll be self-directed and following your own agendas. But he told me, he said, Pastor, I want you to know that we stand with you. And we will always be a part of what God is doing here until Jesus Christ comes or we go by the way of the graves. I want you to know that. And I do appreciate so very much those that were here today to lead us in praise and worship. And I felt the presence of God. Amen. I did. And I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful, so very thankful for that. Well, here in verse 8, and this is the nature of God. <laughs> And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field. You notice God didn't go announce this in the palaces. <laughs> abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them. And the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. You see, I'm in good company. <laughs> I would imagine they didn't know what was coming down here. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy. And when the Holy Spirit says great, we're talking about something that is awesome. Which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the baby wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. Now listen to this. Man, I tell you what. Heaven got excited. I mean, when they heard this one angel, man, this God, this man, is born in the city of David. And he's going to be the Savior of mankind. Listen to this. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth good will towards men. My, 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 what a day. What a day. And that's why, that's why we celebrate the birth of Christ. This good tiding that's been given unto men. You know, today, again, is the day that we celebrate the gift that God gave to mankind. He didn't give it to the angels. Hear what I'm saying. But unto the lost race of Adam, as was promised. 
The Bible refers to Christ, as I said earlier, that holy thing, the day spring, which means the break of day. And in John 8, 12, Jesus said himself, I am the light of the world. Because the world was in darkness, but a prophet by the name of Micah prophesied some 700 years earlier that Christ would be born in Bethlehem. You see, God is never caught off guard. It's not that God forces things to be as they are. What God does, He already knows what's going to take place. But through all of these different scenarios of mankind, God performs His perfect will to be done. You see, He's using imperfect men to bring a perfect gospel to lost men. And that's what God does. Caesar Augustus decreed that the Roman Empire would be taxed. Therefore, a census would be needed. Do you remember them coming around your house taking a census? You remember them wanting to nose into your business? Oh, yeah. Well, this is what Caesar Augustus was doing. And he needed to account for each person to match up the taxation. Each person or families would have to go to their home city for the taxation census. Now here's where we find in Luke 2, 7, that Christ was born in a stable and laid in a manger because there was, and this is the title of my message, there was no room for him in the inn. Now here's where it gets a little fuzzy. You know, when you begin to think about, well, there was no room in the inn, we're thinking about Holiday Inn. You know, well, I know this because I slept in a Holiday Inn last night or whatever that commercial is. But that's not the way it was. In those times back then, in Bethlehem and, and, and Judea, all that area in there, and in Israel in the Mideast, they would build homes. And some of those that had a little more money, what they would do is they would build several stories to their home. There was nothing elaborate. And on the top of the floor, they would use that for other business that they would do up there, whether it was hang out laundry or do washing or whatever. And then they had different rooms inside here that they would give to guests. Because believe it or not, when family came, they actually stayed with the family. They stayed in there and they all came together in the morning, had fellowship, whatever it was. And on the very lower level... What they did, they kept their animals down there. It was under, you get the first, you know, main floor, second floor, last floor. And under there is where they kept their animals. They had to keep them out of the weather. They had cattle and sheep and chickens because they didn't know when the local Dillon store was going to be open. <laughs> they didn't realize it was going to be about 2,000 year wait. <laughs> so, you know, if you want an egg, you better have a chicken. If you want some milk, you better have a cow. And then they had to feed them. So that's where they kept that. Now, when they had to go back to Bethlehem, this is where his family was from, Joseph. So he didn't just go up to a stranger's house and knock on the door and say, hey, man, can we stay the night? No. He more than likely, according to tradition, he went back to members of his family. And when they got there, they call, it was just called an inn. And the reason they did, because you could come in and have rooms for guests. Well, when they, by the time they got there, there wasn't nothing mean. There wasn't anything rude. They just said, well, we don't have any room inside, but what you can do if you want. And there was a place down there. It wasn't really bad, except uh, they had to burn incense. <laughs> you know, because <laughs> it didn't smell real good down there uh, with all the animals and stuff. When you read this story, that's the reason that they are down there in this lower level. And this is why Jesus was born down there and was placed in there. And it wasn't actually a stable, but again, it was a, a home. Apparently, Joseph's family lived there. And at that time, there was no guest rooms, as I was saying. And they were given the least of the accommodations because everybody else already had a room. So they had the poorest and the very least of the home 
of Joseph's family. And I want you to turn, if you will, to the book of Ephesians. And I've often wondered if later on they found out that they put Jesus down in the stable with the animals down there. I don't know. The the Word of God doesn't address that. But I want you to go to verse 1. Ephesians 4 and 1. When you're there, say amen. 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 I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, this is Paul speaking, beseech you, I beg you, I'm pleading with you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called. Heavenly Father, once again, I thank you, Father, for who you are and what you have given to us and what this day represents to each and every one that call themselves Christians, those that are born again and realize the sacrifice that was given for our salvation. The fact that we are a new creation in you, Lord. We have experienced the impact of the work that our Lord has done for us on Calvary. And Father, I ask right now that you would anoint your servant to bring forth this message, Father, with clarity and understanding and with authority, Father. And I pray that each and every one under the sound of my voice, that, Father, they would hear and understand And Father, I pray that they receive it. And that, Lord, that the Holy Spirit would do a work to change us. That we would be more like our Savior each and every day. And once again, Father, we ask that Christ be exalted in your house. And we ask it in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. You know, I will tell you, and each one of you will know this. Each and every one of us needs to pursue or to strive. Now listen. To gain what is most important in our lives. And I will guarantee you, each and every one of us pursue that which is most important in our lives. I'll guarantee you do it. You watch people in the world. And the sad thing is, so many in the body of Christ. And they pursue the things that's most important in their life. Which if they were to reevaluate it, it's not important whatsoever. You know, I'm concerned about the color of the curtains in my house. I wonder whether or not I'm going to get a very nice car. I wonder whether or not I'm going to get a new refrigerator or whether I'm going to have new furniture or I'm going to have whatever. And forget about the things of God. And you kind of shove that off to the side. And so many people forget that Colossians 3, 2 tells us this. He said, set your affections on things above, not on things on the earth. Too many times we serve God, and don't shout me down now. Too many times we serve God at our convenience. Do you hear what I'm saying? We serve God at our convenience. You know what? I'll come out to church whenever it's convenient. You know, I got to thinking, I said, my words, Lord, next year we're going to have the Christmas dinner in September. Those who were at the Christmas dinner know what I'm talking about. I don't know what the deal was, but my word, we had a blizzard come in on the day we had Christmas dinner. And the next day for church, that, that thing was still hanging around. And you know, on Christmas Day, I get up, I said, Lord, Mercy. <laughs> mercy because they were predicting we're going to have a great thunderstorm wind blowing lightning hell whatever and i looked out and god had mercy and i tell you one of the things that was very important to me in planning for this service was number one what direction is the wind coming from how much hairspray to have on To have my wife go back and make sure that back door is unlocked. Now, honey, when you see me, oh, you think I'm kidding. That's my wife. You don't want no preacher up here with his hair all messed up. But I was planning, let me tell you what, oh, it's funny. But I was planning to come to church. That's what my big plan was. I was going to be here this morning if I was going to be here by myself. And I want to tell you this morning... 
I thank God you decided to get up on Christmas morning and come and worship God. And you know what you've done? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pat you on the back. You made some room for Jesus Christ this morning to come to church. Amen. You found out that this is pretty important stuff. But too many times we serve God at our own convenience. Whether we yield to people, places, or things. And many times that takes priority or precedence over the things of the Lord. Okay, here it comes. I'm talking to people. You know, we come out here and pray on Tuesday night. You got plenty of gas in your car. Uh, you know where the church is. You haven't forgotten that. You ain't got anything else to do on Tuesday night. You don't have anything else to do. Except, well, I'm a little tired. You know, see, God even made it where we don't have an excuse because we got DVRs now. See, you can record your programs and see them later on. You don't have to see them on God's time. And there's no reason for you not to come out on Tuesday night to pray. Other than the fact that you want to serve God at your convenience. Oh my. Whether you know it or not, a child of God is at war with that which is of darkness. And there are powers of darkness that are coming against this church. They hate it. But I got news for hell. We are going to win. God is going to take us to the place that we're supposed to be. We're going to keep praying. We're going to keep worshiping. We're going to keep believing and serving God and doing what He's called us to do until that trump of God sounds. Amen, amen. And I will serve God at His convenience. Because I'll guarantee you one thing. When you're laying in a hospital and the doctor says, I'm sorry, they ain't going to make it. You're going to be crying out to God. Oh, yeah. And I'm going to tell you right now, I'm a little disappointed in some of my children. Oh, yeah, I'm going to air it out there. And I know you ain't got no children like this. And my children won't call me back on Saturday. Because they know what's coming. Your dad's going to be preaching Sunday morning. Why don't you come and hear him? And they got every kind of excuse in the world there is. But let me tell you something. I've got a grandson who's going to college. And he's spending all of his efforts to get a degree, go to med school, and become an orthopedic surgeon, and, or whatever it is he's going to be, whatever kind of doctor. And... The things of God are neglected. And he has a good friend that was going to college with him, and they were going to graduate next spring. A Muslim friend. Because my son-in-law is Muslim. And I tried to give them some Bibles one time, and my daughter pleaded with me not to give them Bibles. And she, one of these days, will regret that day. They know nothing about Jesus Christ. And this young Muslim friend of my grandson got into an argument with his father because he wasn't going to be able to graduate when he wanted to. And he went and rented a gun at the bullseye down here and blew his brains out. I found out when I was talking to my daughter-in-law yesterday that my granddaughter had a couple of young friends, 26 years old and 24 years old. And I guess they were brothers. Well, about 10 months ago, the 26-year-old overdosed. I mean, I'm talking about Hayesville, people. This ain't New York City. OD'd on heroin. Well, Friday they went to the other brother's funeral who OD'd on heroin. And I don't know what kind of preacher this guy is trying to console this mother. But he was a little bit late. Instead of sowing into the heart of those people and knowing there is powers of darkness out there that are out there to kill your children. They're out there to kill your loved ones. That's why we come out on Tuesday night and pray, people. We've got to seek the face of God. And I guarantee you, when the Word of God says one will take a thousand to flight, two, ten thousand, my Lord, we need to start filling this up. And I have made this Word, and we're going to do it. 
we're going to start having prayer meeting over here because we're going to need more room because the children of God are going to wake up, get off their backside, and start fighting like we're supposed to be as a child of God. When God gave His very best from heaven to save your soul, it wasn't so you could sit on your backside. Your name is registered in glory in the Lamb's book of life. Now it's time to get up and fight. Well, coming out on Tuesday night's no big deal. Yep, you're right. No big deal to you. But I'm going to tell you, it's a big deal in the mind of God. It is. Because the hand of God will be moved when the children of God get on their face before Him. Why do you think Trump got elected? Because the children of God got on their face and realized this woman, if she got in office, she's coming after the church. And God says, no, nope, my children have prayed. Oh, hallelujah. They've been called by my name and they have turned from their wicked ways. They have repented. Amen. And I'm going to heal their land. That doesn't mean America. That means the land that the children of God are claiming. We are pushing back the gates of darkness and we're going to take ground. We ain't going to leave here as a bunch of wimps and defeated. We're going to be full of glory, full of power, and God is going to do great things amongst His people. Amen. I declare it today. God is about to do some great things. Amen. And if you don't believe it, you need to get prayed through. I serve a living God, a great God, a big God, a powerful God. God called this church. This church was raised up by the living God. No man can take the glory. It's His church, and He will do what He wants, and I will serve Him at His convenience. Amen. I don't want to stand at the judgment seat of Jesus Christ. He asked me, why did you neglect so great a salvation when you could come out and you could petition me any time you wanted to and join your brothers and sister that there could be a work done in my name? And that work will burn up right before you. Your soul will be saved. But you're going to lose those things that you do not want to lose. That's why I'm preaching to you now. Well, we've got time. We've got to do what God has called us to do. You see, we've got to make room. We've got to make room for Him, the King of Kings. You know, what are we going to do? Put Him down in our stables? We're going to put Him in a place where we will serve Him at our convenience? Let me tell you what, on Sunday morning, every child of God should be in the house of God where you've got a place where you can worship Him. And there's a lot of reasons behind that. One of the reasons that you need to be in the house of God, number one, you need a touch from the Almighty. You need the filth of this world washed off you. You need to be revived. You need to worship. Then He wants to do something in you. But don't think for a second the only reason you come to church is so you can get. You come to church that you can give. That you can be a blessing. Do you know that every time I see you come to this church, it I mean it gets me going. It, the children of God have come to worship, and I'm here to do battle with them. I'm here to preach as the Holy Spirit anoints me and to help you to be encouraged and know that God ain't done with you. If there's things in your life that you're battling with, i got great news for you. On Calvary, 2,000 years ago, when that blood hit the ground, deliverance came to the child of God. Amen. And you start believing that. Don't you back down. I don't care how many times you fail God. You get back up and say, I know, I know, I know that the work that Jesus did on Calvary, it shook hell's gates and it took everything that the devil had and it got, oh hallelujah, he destroyed the works of the enemy. He destroyed his works. Amen. My, my, my. Oh hallelujah. 
And I want to see some worship services around here where more than just one or two people begin to dance. I want to see more than just one or two begin to run. My Lord, you're young enough. And when the Holy Spirit touches you, don't you be embarrassed of the Holy Spirit. One of these days when you feel like taking off, take off and run. My Lord. There was one man that outran horses. Do you think God's embarrassed when we clap and shout and speak in tongues? Absolutely not. Jesus Christ is glorified. We need to start acting more like a Pentecostal church. When people come in here that are lost and the devil has a grip on their heart, they begin to feel the convicting power of the Holy Spirit. Say, my Lord, I'm undone. I'm undone. Eternity lies before me. What am I going to do? Well, there's a man by the name of Jesus that says, Anyone, whosoever will, I will let them drink. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. God's ready to redeem. That blood has already been shed. Oh, hallelujah. My, my. What a God we serve. We've got to understand that God is ready to do a work that only He's able to do. My Lord, make room. Push all that other garbage out of the road. Let Him be first place in your life. My Lord, what a different place. And I guarantee you, Jesus will feel very comfortable when He's sitting on the throne of your heart. Oh, my. My, my, my. This ain't just some little old message about Mary had a little lamb. My, 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 my. Woo! Man, this is good, man. I tell you what, I've been working out so I can preach. I have been, people. God said, you need to get off your tail, get on that treadmill so I can use that body. Amen. And that's what I'm doing. Man, that... <laughs> Man, you talk about something. You know, I used to be motivated a long time to get work out and get buffed up and all that stuff. And it was for the things of the world. Now when I'm on that treadmill, I tell you what, I'm watching Message of the Cross. And I'm going like this. And I'm praising and speaking in tongues and worshiping God. My Lord God, there's so much you've got to do. He is going to do it. Man, He's a God that gets things done, people. Israel got to a place, people where they began to offer up to God. And you can find this in, I believe it's the book of Haggai. The sickly. No, it's in Malachi. The wounded and the lame animals that they couldn't sell and they had no use. Okay, reach over and grab that spiritual seatbelt because it's going to get tough right now. And I'm going to say this and I don't care what the devil has to say. Now I want you to listen to me and listen good because I'm giving you a word from Almighty God. So many times when we come in here, you know, do you know that this place costs money? Really? Well, it does. It costs money. Do you know why we have this place? So we can, number one, come to worship God. Or we can do battle. Well, God can prepare us to go back out here and not be weak-spined, but to be bold. And when the whole, and I'm not talking about being rude. You just don't go up to people and shove Jesus down their throat. That is an insult to God. You wait, and, and I tell you what, if you're ready, God will make someone ready for you. And that's why we come here, is to be able to worship, to do battle, to be prepared, and to receive the anointed Word of God because it will move on your soul. It will have an impact. And you will learn things. You will know things. You'll begin to believe things. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. This is the reason we have this place. It is a nursery. Oh yeah, where we got young people where we teach them how to live for God. This is also a place where birth 
is given to those that are born again. And we're going to see a whole lot more of that in this upcoming year. This is a place where people receive the gifts that God wants them to have. The baptism with the Holy Spirit. And if you don't have the baptism with the Holy Spirit, that needs to be one of the things that you need to seek the face of God for. You cannot be used for service in the kingdom of God the way the Lord wants you to be used without the baptism with the Holy Spirit. You need it. Some people say, well, I, I, I'm just, I don't, I, I don't, I'm a little embarrassed. Don't be embarrassed of what Jesus Christ died for to give you. And I'll guarantee you, when you get baptized with the Holy Spirit, you're going to say, my, 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 we started to come to this place a long time ago. You know, when I find a good restaurant, I go, my, where's this place been? It's a good place to eat. And God's got some good things for you. Now, I'm going to get back to what I was going to say. They begin to offer up to God the lame. Oh, I got this old lamb here. This poor old thing's going down. It's got a broken leg. We're going to have to put it out of his misery. Let's take it down to the priest and let him offer it up to God. Oh, yeah, that's what they did. And they got one that's diseased, that's dying. Hey, well, we can't even sell it. Let's take it to God. And I'm going to tell you what we do as a people of God when it comes to tithing. I want you to hear me. Oh, well, tithing's under the law. No, no. It was with Abraham and Melchizedek. And there was no law then. It was grace and faith. And God blessed Abraham. And he gave 10% of his increase to Melchizedek, who was the forerunner of Jesus Christ. He is our high priest after the order of Melchizedek. Oh, well, them preachers, they just want my money. Oh, I'll guarantee if that preacher comes up there and says, you give $1,000, God will pay off your mortgage. You'll be writing that check out. Believe in that lie and that garbage. God set up a system for His people. And so many of us have got our finances so screwed up we can't tithe. Like Brother Jimmy says, it's all squirreled up. Here's what God wants from you. He doesn't want your lame, your wounded. He doesn't want your tip. He wants His tithe. It's not a law, it's a love affair. My Lord, people! I give to my God, not that He'll give. He gives to me because He's my Heavenly Father. My Lord, I can't earn anything from God. And the more I sow, the more He blesses me. I tell you what, I'm heading towards 69, and I'll guarantee you I'm going to be out, able to outrun some of you 45-year-olds. I won't go much lower than that. <laughs> Pastor Rodney, I'm going to have a race one of these days. <laughs> I tell you what, man, I can jump high, and I'm not out of breath. Feels good. God blesses me with things money can't buy. I know my dad right now, and I love him. He's got heart problems, and I don't know whether God wants to heal him or take him to glory or the, you know, the trump's going to sound. I don't know. That's God's business. But I guarantee you right now, if my dad could write a check, if he had the money to get his, all of his health back, you'd write it in a heartbeat, wouldn't you, Paul? And see, those are the things that come from God. And God wants to bless you in ways that you have no idea of. And you restrict the hand of God because you don't trust Him. Or you get too selfish. Or you want to give Him the wounded or the lame. Or you want to give Him that which is left over. You know, how would you like to invite Jesus over and say, Well, now listen, Lord, we had some meatloaf about three days ago. We're going to get it out and warm it up for you. That's what you do when you come to church and you tip God. If you make $1,000, write a check out for 100 bucks and give it to the Lord. It belongs to Him as a child of God. Hear what I'm saying? I told you it's going to get heavy. But what I'm doing, I'm telling you the truth. Because when you get to glory and you find out you blew it, you ain't going to look at me and say, well, you know that pastor, he never told us. He was just too shy. Mm -mm. I'm going to tell you what the Word of God says. He says, he that sows much will reap much. Him that sows a little they're going to get the stingy end of it too. That's the Word of God. God wants you to trust Him with your money. Oh, Pastor, could you pray for me? I think I've got a little heart problem, or I've got a kidney problem, or I've got a leg problem. No, you've got a billfold problem. I never get anybody come up to the altar and go, 
Pastor, I need you to, my Lord, God help me. Pray for it, Pastor. Let it get right here to my heart. Pray for it. Pray that I'll give what I should give. Don't get stingy when it comes to God. He has plans. It takes money, but He wants to bless you. I'm telling you the truth. Pretty soon God wouldn't even accept it. Man, I'm going to get in a lot of trouble. I need some room here to run around. We well, can move these back here in a minute. I'm going to tell you right now. Best Buy, listen to me, Best Buy, Walmart, and I don't know what other stars, stores, Amazon.com, all the other, they get more of God's money than He does. Well, this is on sale, and this is a 55-inch. Well, I hope that thing blows up in your face. I hope you go home and get ready to set it up and trip over and put your knee in it. You know, a lot of people say, well, you don't want to preach in the book of Malachi. That's of the law. Well, God hasn't changed His mind. Well, man, rob God? You've robbed me in tithes and in offerings. My Lord. I'm not fussing with you. I want you to be blessed of God. I want you to make room for Him. Don't put Him in the stables when you can put Him up in the guest room. That's right. Maybe you might have to sacrifice a few things. Well, I'm sorry. God said, seek those things that are at Walmart. Oh, oh, above on the top shelf. That's what I <laughs> said. Seek those things that are above. They're on sale. And I'm going to tell you this right now. This church has more people that are faithful in their tithes as far as a percentage than the normal church. Trust me. And I appreciate it. Let me tell you as a pastor, you know, one of the things I do, and I was a financial consultant for over 25 years. I know how to do a budget. I know how to, and I'm going to tell you this right now. I'm almost afraid to tell you this because I don't want you to go backwards on me. We bought that building over there for $130,000. You know how much we owe on it right now? Zero. You know why? Because we got a God that knows how to provide for His people. Amen. Let me tell you right now, there ain't a bunch of preachers on this platform getting rich out of your billfold. We're taking the, the menial amount that we need to live on. That's all we want. We don't want the big houses. We don't want the fancy cars. What we want is a child of God to serve Him. And we want those that are lost to be born again. And not be, oh hallelujah, under the control of the enemy. And it's coming, people. We're no longer going to give God the second best. Well, if I tithe, my wife will jump me. <laughs> Let her jump. Let me tell you, she ain't fighting against you. She's fighting against God. And if it's vice versa, husband goes, no, nah, you can't die. We got to die. I'm sorry. I'm going to serve God and not you. You hear what I'm saying? Now, see, this is a true prosperity message, what you're listening to now. This is relationship with a living God. And if you don't know how to tithe or how much you're going to give, I'll put up a chart. <laughs> It's real easy. Take the decimal point, move it over one. <laughs> That's it. You got a thousand, move it over, turns into a hundred. You make twenty thousand. Oh, I pray God. Hit me, tell you something. I pray God bless me. Those that can deal with it, those that can handle it, those that are gonna be a good steward with. It. I pray you make twenty thousand dollars a week. You move over one decimal point. That's two thousand dollars. I had sometimes my mother one time, and I'm gonna tell on her. <laughs> See, I don't just treat one woman bad. I treat my mother bad too. One time she, done this. I'm telling you this for a reason. One time she says, oh, we just got to pay so much taxes and all that, blah, blah, blah. My mother the other day, she said, man, I wish we could pay some taxes. Because <laughs> see, when you're paying taxes, you're making a lot of money. I wish I could pay $5,000 a week in tithe. But the problem is people start making that kind of money. They go, 
Well, maybe we better check that lame lamb out. Let's get that. We don't want it. Let's get that tip burger out. Let's warm up the meatloaf. All right, I, I think you get my point. I'm going to go on. <laughs> I told you when it comes to third party, you weren't going to preach me down. But see, we can't become careless in our relationship with God as we find less room in our inn and assign God to a lower estate. You see, God didn't give us a gift that might work some of the time. God gave us a gift that works all the time. And His name is Jesus Christ. And He cannot fail. And the blood that was shed, I got news for you. Satan don't want nothing to do with it. Mm -mm -mm. Now listen. God wants the best for us. But when Christ no longer has the preeminence in our lives, God will not reward disobedience. Hear what I'm saying. And it's not about just being obedient. People, I want you to hear this. Forget the money thing. I want you to hear relationship. God wants you to fall in love with who He is. He's got an eternity prepared for us that is beyond anything we can comprehend. People, you're going to be able to move at the speed of thought. We are going to be kings and priests. I don't know what God has planned for us. You know, we got to be faithful because you don't want to be just a ruler of Hayesville. <laughs> well, what did you do? <laughs> well, I must have messed up somewhere. <laughs> You see, God, he said, if you'll be faithful, listen to this, listen to this real close. If you'll be faithful in the little things, you know, what? He said, I'll make you ruler over much. People, God looks at money as nonsense. It's nothing to him. God can create a universe with a word spoken. That's it. It's us that exaggerates how important Money is. We think, well, we got to keep it so we don't run. Do you think God has run out? Has He run out of jobs? Has He run out of blessings? Has He fallen asleep? Has He ignored you? Does He not care? Of course He cares and He sees and He knows. But He wants to raise up us, His children. If you will be faithful over the little, and I'm talking about money, I'll tell you what. The major thing in marriages, and I know this for a fact, when I was in financial consulting, one of the major problems in marriages was finances. Yeah. Well, he bought this, I want to buy that. <laughs> well, neither one of you can afford neither one of them. How about not doing that at all? I have tried to counsel with him and done everything I can possibly do. And I just leave it at that. But God wants you to be faithful with a little thing. Money's little. But he wants you to also be faithful in, in everything that God has called you to do. If you'll do that, he'll make you ruler over much. And it's coming, people. It's coming. Now listen to this. To give the Lord the first place in all things, now listen to this very closely, is to take him as the fountain of living water. To give him preeminence, first place in everything, is to take him as the living water water. I tell you, you get out in a desert. Is it, has anybody here been really parched? Man, I mean, you were so thirsty. You thought, man, if I don't get to a water fountain, it is over. And man, when you start drinking that water, it's just like, oh man, this is so, it's, it's like nothing. You can't even express how it satisfies. And that's what God wants to be in our lives. We owe God our very best because He made you. Anyone that is born again, you are a new creation in Christ Jesus. Do you hear me? You are a brand new creation in Christ. And you know what? You'll always be new. You know, you'll never get old. I'm not talking about this old thing you live in. I'm talking about you. This new creation will never, ever, ever get old. And when God takes us to glory, this is the thing I like the most. You know, I get bored real easy. I really do. I get bored real easy. I try to watch a movie with my wife, and I'm saying what they're going to say before they say it. 
<laughs> you know, I'm like, okay, I'm done with this, man. What do we do now? And I'll get out and piddle around. I get bored with that. But when we get with the Lord, we will never, ever be bored again. And you know what's really cool, too? Is any time we want a fish taco, we can have one. And I don't know who would eat a fish taco, but you can have one. <laughs> Listen, I'm going I'm to let you go here. We, I'm going to try to let you go a little early. Oh, man, look at here. Man, this is great. Yeah. <laughs> hey, man, man, this is good. Got some good stuff? I got some good stuff here. Listen to this. I, uh, number one, we should give God the supreme room in our life. Always be number one. You know, we make so many decisions without consulting God. God, what is it you want me to do? Well, I can't hear from God. Huh, do you show up on Tuesday nights to prayer? Well, no. <laughs> well, maybe you need to learn to hear His voice by having a relationship with Him. And I'll guarantee you, you begin to pray on a regular basis with the Lord. Well, I don't know what to pray. Well, just tell Him you love Him. God, help me to know you. Help me to understand you. Get the Bible out when you're praying. Just read some of this and pray about it. Say, Man, God, I want some of that. I want you to do this in my life. God wants to have a relationship with you. Now listen to this. Now I want you to think about this. Each day we exchange a day of our life for something. Do you hear me? Yesterday, you exchange your life for whatever it was you had that day. And it's gone. You can do that again. It's over. It's done with. Now, it is as if at the start of life, we are issued a big box that has a certain amount of coins in it. Now think about this. You're going to go, wow, man, that makes a lot of sense. It has a lot of coins in it. You don't know how many coins are in that box. But each coin represents a day. So you don't know how many of those coins are in that box. But each day, you can only take out one coin. Now, you can spend that coin that day on anything you want. But once it's spent, it is gone. And the next day, it's the same thing. So you can choose each day to spend that coin however you like. You can choose to spend it on the things of this world. You can use it to spend on leisure. And there's nothing wrong with having, sitting down, having a good time, fellowshipping. And I'm not preaching against you. You can sit down and watch a good movie. I tell you what, anymore, uh, you know, we, try, we get involved in this thing where we can have movies real cheap. And it's this thing where you pay like $10 a, a month. I guess it says Netflix or whatever. Netwit. Netwit flicks or whatever. And we're netwit sometimes. But the thing comes in the mailbox. And we run, stick that thing in there. And the next thing you know, we've got to turn that thing off because hell has just come into our living room. I've got to shut it off, put it back in. I run out to the mailbox to put that thing back in the mail. But sometimes we get one. That's kind of cool to watch. It's kind of entertaining. It has a little, you know, this or that or whatever to it. And I, my wife, she and I both love chick flicks. I found that's what they were called when I got one that wasn't one. As those are called chick flicks. I thought it was like, you know, Chick-fil-A or something. I don't know. But anyway, there's nothing wrong, people, with, with having a good time. But there's a priority in this. And the way you spend that day, each day, can only be spent one time. One day you're going to go to that box to get a coin out and there's going to be none there. Then it's time to go before God at that time. And see, you don't know when that's going to be. These young boys that thought they were having a good time with heroin, that was injecting themselves and thought they could get a little higher, a little bit more, and end up killing themselves. And it was kind of odd as I was talking to my daughter-in-law, which I was kind of distraught. I said, well, I wonder where he is. Well, you know, he wasn't too bad a guy. And I went, time out. People that are born again, usually one of the things God will deliver them from immediately is hair on. You know, you're not in there doing hair on every day. And God will. And... I said, you know, I said, my Lord, I said, this young man is in the pit of hell right now. The coins are gone. He chose to spend that coin on heroin and to satisfy what he thought was the lust of this flesh. And it will never satisfy. 
You can spend that coin on the things of the world that you think are going to make you happy and then they lose their luster and you're stuck with that payment every month. You hear what I'm saying? And a lot of this stuff is taking place in your life. So you only got one coin, if you will, each and every day. And again, the art of living wisely is largely a matter of spending your coins on the things that really matter in light of eternity and not frivolously wasting your time. And I want you to turn to me to the book of Hag- Haggai. Turn over there and uh, I want to read a couple of scriptures and I'm going to let you out of here in just a minute. Remember, the title of this message is There Was No Ruin. Haggai chapter 1. I want you to go to verse 5. And I want you to follow along here with me. Get there. Say amen. 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 All right. He says, Now therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. You know, if, if, if you've been in this Wednesday night class, you know Haggai is one of the prophecies of the post-exile. This is after they come out of being in captivity in Babylon. And now they have been made free by Cyrus the Great, and they are free. Now God is beginning to deal with them, because let me tell you, when you look at, look at the Old Testament, you see the same scenario happen over and over and over again. The people of God are blessed by God, then they get happy, then they sin, Then God sends the enemies, and they're conquered. They cry out to God. They repent. God blesses them. They get happy. (laughs) Then they forget God. They start sinning again. And this is what happens. This is why God is telling them now. He says, Now therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, Consider your ways. You have sown much and bring in little. Listen to this. You eat, but you have not enough. You drink, but you are not filled with drink. You clothe yourself, but there is none warm. And he who earns wages, earns wages to put it into a bag with holes. He said, consider your ways. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Go up to the mountains and bring wood and build a house. And I will take pleasure in it, and I will be glorified, saith the Lord. Now listen to this very closely. What are you saying here? Get your priorities straight. Think about building my house. Because I will guarantee you, if you give attention to that, God says, don't worry about your house. I'll take care of it. He said, if you'll seek first my kingdom... And my righteousness, oh, you better know there's a lot of things that God wants straightened out in a Christian's life. He said, then I will add, I, God Almighty, I will add these things. God will cause things to take place that you didn't even know was coming. Oh, I'm going to hurry here. We must put first things first. We can't just give lip service to God. You see, when you get out of here, you've got to ask God if there's things in your life and they ain't a one of us that doesn't need some change in our lives constructed by the Holy Spirit. You need to pray and ask God, Father, what is it in my life? Or you may already know what it is that God wants changed in your life. And you, you can't do it yourself. You begin to pray. Is I'm asking you, Lord, to help me. Change me. Change my heart. See, that's where everything is derived from, is the heart. That's where it's derived from. And if God has priority in your heart and He's given the best room, guess what? You're going to be one happy camper. You're going to be going in the grocery store. You've got this goofy smile on your face. People thinking you just stole something. (laughs) But you are so full of glory that you're looking for the opportunity to share what it is that God has done in your life. You know what? People say, well, I don't know how to talk to people. Yeah, you do. 
Tell them what God did for you in your life. Do you know what, my friend? I used to be on cocaine. I'm talking about me, a pastor. I used to be addicted to cocaine. I was a raving alcoholic. And I tell you what, this alcoholic didn't drink cheap booze. <laughs> my wife, she was my cohort in the alcohol. And I won't say that she could do more cocaine than me. I would sit there do a little bit of cocaine. I'm thinking, God, please don't kill me. Please don't kill me. That's the way it was. But you see, when God delivered me, He didn't just take the cocaine away. He took it out of my heart. I don't want it. I want God. That's what I want. And if the heart doesn't change, nothing's going to change in your life. And God's in the business of heart surgery. He'll change your heart if you'll ask Him and believe. My Lord, God is busy forming Christ in you if you will let Him. My words. You talk about meeting your needs. Poor old Peter said, what are we going to do paying taxes? I tell you what, I want you to go fishing. <laughs> Go fishing, yeah. You're going to catch fish. You're going to open his mouth, and there's a gold coin in there. You don't think God can't orchestrate that which will take care of business in a way you never expect? Could you imagine Peter going down there? Where you, I'm going fishing. Really? Yep. I'm going to catch that one that has a gold coin in his mouth. Yeah. And you know what? I'm not going to have to catch four or five and throw them back and keep fishing. You know what? The first one that hit... Bam, that was the one. I got it up, and you know what? He didn't look in there wondering if it's there. He looked in there and says, there's a gold coin in here. Bam, there it was. God can take care of us. And He's in the business of amazing us. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> if we'll let Him, if we'll let Him. <laughs> People, let me tell you something. God has raised up this church for His glory. Each and every one of us, God wants us to have a role to play. None is more important than any other. Let me tell you something. This man right here, Sister Kathy, Brother George Moore, they are so faithful. I'll come in here, nobody knows. And now Brother Steve is over. I said, Steve, you're going to wear the carpet out, brother. Mm. <laughs> and I mean, he's behind the chairs, picking up everything, picking up, make sure there ain't no napkins or Kleenexes or anything else laying around. And you got, you got the brother George Moore. I tell you what, we got the cleanest windows in Wichita. I'm not kidding, man. That guy, I said, what are you doing? Clean the windows. And he got, it ain't that cheap stuff. He got that latest technology, man. He's out there cleaning all the windows. I'll see Sister Kathy. She'd be over there cleaning over there, cleaning over there. Brother Steve be over there, be in the bathroom, cleaning everything, buffing it up and everything. And I'm going to tell you what, that means as much to God as me standing up here preaching. I'll guarantee you. Amen. Don't you like coming into a clean church? Amen. And you know what? It honors God. Mm. Each one of us have got a part, people, to play. And I tell you what, let me just kind of get your early Christmas present out. Well, I guess it ain't early, today's Christmas. I'm going to get your Christmas present. I'm going to show you something. You guys, some of you are going to start teaching. You hear what I'm saying? You're going to start teaching. You're going to start getting involved in some of the youth ministry. You're going to get a burden in your heart. You're going to say, man, I need to do this. And God is going to anoint you to do it. You hear what I'm saying? You've got more on the inside of you than you know. And you know what that is? That's God Almighty. Amen. God Almighty that's on the inside of you. you know, my, oh, my word. Let me hurry here. You know, sometimes we give no thought as to how we're living. And we will naturally live for our own agendas and not God's. Do you hear what I'm saying? Sometimes we just kind of all of a sudden, we just fall back in the rut and we just start doing what we do rather than seeking the counsel of God. And it is foolish and vain to live for the things of this world, people. Don't set your affections on the things of this world. Please, don't do that. Don't, you know, because the world is out here to rob the children of God. That's what the world's out there for. I mean, every time I can't even get on my phone and bam, there comes a commercial.
And I tell you, they're good at it too. Because if you go look at something, you know, I've been looking at these mattresses you can buy for like $600. And they're supposed to be the answer all. I mean, you get in this thing, and it's like, you know, good, it's like, <laughs> that's what they say. And now that I've looked there, every time I look for something, bam, there's that ad for that needle and tuft. I went, <laughs> get out of here. Something else, and bam, here comes another commercial. Or I want to watch, you know, maybe a, a Christmas video or something like that. Bam, here comes, you've got to watch the ad for four seconds before it'll go off. And sometimes it's kind of catchy and you go, well, that's pretty cool. Really? It fries what? Really? In how many seconds? Man, I can make a whole steak dinner and popcorn. What is that? I'm going to write that down. And I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to confess my, one of my sins to you. You want to know what it is? I got gadget sin. Oh, so I see some heads knobbing out there. Yeah, I got gadget sin too. You go down in my basement, and I got a shelf full of gadgets. And I got a box. Now, I got this one free. I haven't even opened it up yet. We've had it for a year. There's some kind of a thing that'll make stuff you can drink that'll just make you live like Rip Van Winkle for 100 years. I don't know. <laughs> but see, we get our eyes on the world. That's what happens. And Satan starts stealing from God's people. Now, <laughs> I'm about done here. Those who put their prosperity above God's house will never get what they're after. Do you hear what I'm saying? And you know what you're really after? Satisfaction. You ever heard that song out in the world? I can't get no satisfaction. That's right, buddy, because you're following the devil, you moron. And you ain't never going to get any. Now, you guys didn't think I knew that song, did you? <laughs> I want to close with this scripture. I want you to go to the book of Ephesians. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 2, and I want you to go to verse 19. Yeah, amen. Now listen to this. Now therefore... You are no more strangers and foreigners. Isn't that awesome? Yes. My Lord. But fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the cornerstone in whom all the building fitly framed together grows unto a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are built together for a habitation of God through the Spirit. Amen. I want you to stand to your feet today. And what I pray is from this day forward, people, and I really mean it as your pastor, you will be greatly blessed if you will put God first in your life. The decisions that you make. I'm not going to stay home on Tuesday when I can come out to prayer meeting. Come out for 10 minutes. You know what? Get a taste of what it feels like to participate in doing battle. You know, don't, don't miss a Sunday because, well, I've been to church three weeks. They ain't going to miss me one Sunday. You walk right into a trap that the devil has put before you. You need to be here every time these doors are open. I know there's a lot of people in here who don't come out on Wednesday night. I don't know why. I don't know what it is. You know, I'm doing my best, and I'm studying, I'm praying, I'm doing everything I can. You need to come out and be a part of what God's doing. And you know what? I pray for again for this to be the most blessed time in your life. And as we approach the new year, people, I want God to do a new thing in us and in this body. And I want you to know how much I love you guys. Sister Evelyn, you guys, it's good to see you. It's good to see you guys. And all your family and all these friends. I don't know who they are, but it's good to see you guys. And I want you to know that you're, you've been missed and you're loved. I want you to know that. Amen. Each and every one, all of our guests today. 
I want you to know how much we've loved having each and every one of you here. And I pray that you will receive the greatest blessing this Christmas in your life. Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for who you are. You're, oh, my Lord, you're such an awesome God. You're so patient, so long-suffering, so good to us. And Father, I pray that you will strengthen and keep each and every one that's here today. Oh, Father, protect them, bless them, and bring them back, Lord, at the appointed time, according to your perfect will. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Love one another.